Did you know that the expression being groggy actually meant being hangover for the British Navy back in the 1600s? I did it. <laughs> I actually learned it when I made some researches on the history of the whiskey sour. It comes from the fact that they were drinking a lot of drugs, and obviously when they were having too many, they were saying, I'm feeling groggy today. But why am I talking about drugs? That's because the drug is kind of the ancestor of the sour cocktails. The whole category. But anyway, today we're gonna deep dive into the whiskey sour, so let's save that for another episode. And we're gonna make three versions of the drink. A lazy one, a pro one, and a clarified one. So if you guys are ready, let's do it! What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you very much for joining us again for this new cocktail video. So, did you know that we had to wait until 1870 for the whiskey to be commonly used in a sour drink? Yep, that's true. Because before, the first mention, the oldest mention of a sour drink was not including whiskey. It dates back from 1856 and the unwritten note of the sour cocktail, the oldest one, is from Toronto, Canada. And because of that, today for the lazy version of the cocktail, I'm gonna use a Canadian whiskey. To be fair, I didn't pick this whiskey just because it was Canadian. You know, Canadian whiskey are really known to be smooth and mellow, and I believe in this version of the cocktail, it is perfectly appropriate. So for the ingredients, we're gonna need whiskey, lemon juice, and simple syrup. So now, the cocktail. First, in the cocktail shaker, we're gonna pour two ounces of our chosen whiskey. One ounce of simple syrup. And one ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now we can fill our shaker with ice and give it a good shake for about 10 seconds. We're simply gonna strain it over ice in a rocks glass. This would be good just like that, but if you wanna garnish it, just a little piece of lemon and a cherry on a pick. And there you go, my friends, a lazy whiskey sour. Cheers. Mm, delicious, but very simple and straightforward. It's whiskey and lemon balanced with sugar. But it's refreshing and I love it. And I'm sure if you use a whiskey that you like, you will love it as well. I actually really enjoy the fact that I'm using a mellow Canadian whiskey, kind of balances the sharpness of the acidity. Speaking of acidity, if you have a drier palate, you can cut off a quarter ounce of simple syrup, but I think these specs will please most of the people. But there's a way to make this better. And this is what we're gonna do in the pro version. Let's do it. For this one, I'm using Buffalo Trace Bourbon. It's just a bourbon that I love. It is very affordable. The ABV is at 90 proof, which is quite enough to stand out in a cocktail, but it's not too strong. It's not gonna knock you out after just one drink. And overall, it's just a beautiful product, but you can use that bourbon or rye of your choice for this cocktail. As long as you love it, it's gonna make for a delicious cocktail. We are also gonna need lemon juice, simple syrup, Angostura bitters, and one egg white. First, we're gonna pour two ounces of bourbon into a shaker. Then we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. One ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And one egg white. And now we're gonna dry shake the cocktail. It's gonna emulsify the egg white. It's gonna make a beautiful froth. It's gonna change the texture of the drink. It's gonna have a very interesting impact on the flavor that we're gonna talk later in the tasting note. So I'm gonna dry shake it for about 10 seconds. You have to hold it very tight because egg white tend to expand. So be careful not to explode your cocktail all over you. It happened to me a few times. <laughs> Photos? Do we have a photo? I think we do have a photo. <laughs> If we found it, you gotta see it somewhere. <laughs> we'll cry shake it, hold it tight. And now we're gonna add some ice. So we're gonna use one big cube of ice to help the emulsification. And another one that we're gonna crack. This one's gonna be for the dilution. 
And now we're gonna shake it once again for 10 seconds. We're gonna fine strain it in a cocktail coupe. Then we're gonna express lemon oil over the egg white for the beautiful aroma. And using a bitter bottle, we're gonna make a few dots of Angostura bitters on top. And with a pick, we're gonna pass through them to make a beautiful swirl of Angostura hearts. Just like that. And there you go, the pro version of the Whiskey Sour. Cheers. Mm. This is how, in my opinion, a Whiskey Sour should be made. This one is amazing it's delicious a lot of people a lot of purists will call that version of the whiskey sour a boston sour because of the addition of the egg white but regardless of the name that you want to give it i think this is the way you should do it the egg white really smoothens everything the rough edges of the whiskey sometimes the acidity and the sharpness of the lemon and it kind of dries down the sweetness of the simple syrup changes the mouthfeel, adds a lot of texture. It is simply delicious. You have beautiful aroma from the lemon oil and a little bit of spicy notes from the Angostura. It is really, really good. But now we have to clarify it and we're gonna make something special with it. So let's make a clarified New York Sour. Let's do it. For the clarified one, we're gonna use rye whiskey because we need the extra spiciness from this one because rye is spicier than bourbon. Because when you clarify a cocktail with milk, if you don't know, you change a lot of things. We call that milk washing. So we add milk to a cocktail with booze, obviously in acidity, it will curdle. And with this process, the curdles will trap flavor compounds, tannins, a lot of color as well. And you'll be left out with a cocktail completely different. A lot of people will argue that you are actually kind of ruining the uh, spirit because the tannins from the aging process will kind of be washed out. But when you think about it, this method was actually invented to smoothen the rough edges of the poorly made spirit. So in a way it is kind of true, but it is just very interesting to make this process and to see how it changes the cocktail. So that's the reason why in this particular recipe of a whiskey sour, I go for a rye and I think it works really well. But to compensate for the fact that we are taking away a lot of the tannins, we're gonna add a little bit of red wine on top of the clarified version because red wine has a lot of tannins naturally. It's kind of gonna bring them back. It's gonna make an amazing cocktail. So for the recipe today, we're gonna need rye whiskey, lemon juice, simple syrup, patient bitters, red wine, and milk. So we're gonna make a double cocktail this time because one thing you need to know when you make a milk washed cocktail it becomes shelf stable. I'm sorry I'm taking my time because I have a hard time to pronouncing shelf stable and not making it sound like chef stable. Could you get it? Shelf stable. It's not gonna go bad. That's what I wanted to say. So you can just Place it in the fridge and wait until you're thirsty for your lazy night. You simply take it out and pour it over ice. It's never going to change. It's always going to be good. So I think it's very cool. So we're going to go with four ounces of rye whiskey into a mixing glass. To that, we're going to add two ounces of simple syrup, two ounces of lemon juice, and four dashes of patient bitters. Now, in another glass container, you're gonna pour two ounces of whole milk and pour your cocktail over the milk. I always say that when I milk wash a drink, it is very important, in my opinion, to pour the cocktail over the milk. Because if you do the other way around, the milk will start to curdle right when it hits the cocktail and not the whole cocktail will be in contact with uncurdled milk. So the clarification process will not be as efficient. So pour the cocktail over the milk. Then you can let it rest for a few minutes for the curdling to happen, but I believe it is not really necessary. You can right away pour that mixture over a coffee filter. I always wet my coffee filter when I milk wash a drink. There's two reasons. The coffee filter will stay in place and you will remove the paper taste from the filter. 
So the first drops will always be cloudy. If you notice here, it's very cloudy. That's because the kernels haven't settled at the bottom of the filter. So you wait for about one minute or so. And after that, you're gonna take your unfiltered mixture that's already in your funnel, and you're gonna change it a vessel, and you're gonna repour your cloudy bits over it, and then everything that's gonna come out of the filtration will be crystal clear. So now all you have to do is to wait until the whole cocktail is clarified. You can bottle it up, and this is it, my friends. This is how you make a clarified whiskey sour. So now we can place it in the fridge until we're ready to drink it. And once you are, you take it out, you pour two and a half ounces in a mixing glass. Briefly, you're gonna stir it over ice, maybe for half the time that you usually do for a normal cocktail because there's already a little bit of dilution because of the weight from the milk that's incorporated now in the cocktail. Then you're gonna pour it over a big block of ice and you're gonna add gently half an ounce of red wine on top of the cocktail. It's gonna float, it's gonna have a beautiful look and believe me, it's gonna taste amazing. And there you go, my friends. This is how you make a clarified New York sour. Mm. This one is very something. I really enjoy it. Amongst all the clarified cocktails that I've made so far, I think this one is on top of the list. No, I know this one is on top of my favorite list. It is very changed. There's nothing to do with the other ones. You still get the acidity, a little bit of the whiskey flavor, but obviously the aging notes or the tannins from the whiskey are actually washed out a little bit, but they're brought back with the um, red wine. It works really well. It adds a lot of fruitiness as well to the cocktail. It's very refreshing. Um, it's really easy to drink. So if you are looking for something refreshing for this summer, you want to try a milk clarification because you've never done it before or because you love that and you're looking for another idea, this one is a must. I guarantee I love it and I hope you're going to love it too. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the like and the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new cocktail video. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers. Oh, and remembering the groggy expression before, be careful if you try them all, not to be that groggy guy the next day. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Be careful, drink responsibly, and have fun, and see you very soon. See you next week. Ciao.